The Empire made it its job to subjugate the entire galaxy, stationing millions of troops on worlds to hold down the Empire's law. Despite this, we often see worlds under Imperial rule being pretty dystopian, but why exactly is this? Why does the Empire destroy so many of the worlds that it conquers? Now, when I say destroy, I'm not necessarily only talking about Death Star or orbital bombardment levels of destruction, I'm also talking about things such as infrastructure. What I'm basically saying is that once Imperial jurisdiction begins on a world, it slowly begins to decline in many ways, chiefly economically, becoming poorer and poorer, leading to a poor living conditions for the people who live there. Now, the first thing we need to actually look at is the real damage, and this is the Imperial's use of force in nearly every single situation. The Empire is an autocracy, it brings its enemies to heal by force, and the slightest hint of rebellion is met with overwhelming retaliation. This often leads to the Imperial's initial attacking of the world being incredibly destructive. Imperials often raise entire towns and villages if they believe that they pose even the slightest threat to their operation or could possibly be harbouring any form of rebel. If a world further refuses to resist Imperial rule, then they have no problem launching a full-on campaign in which cities, factories, and much, much more will be destroyed to assure victory. When the Empire commits to a war, it commits total war. It has very, very few rules of engagement. So basically, if in, like in many situations, if your world does not willingly join the Empire, you know for a fact it's going to take a lot of damage when the Imperials take it by force. Once the world is taken, you need to remember the fact that Imperials play security above everything else. And this has a very big knock-on effect. As you can imagine, Imperial settlements are incredibly bureaucratic, with constant background checks, being asked for identification, and sanctioned searches of property, etc. And all of these things take an incredible amount of time and resources. Imperial bureaucracy is very much alive. And all this time spent dedicated to security means that generally productivity on these worlds under the Empire is far lower than if the Empire was not there. People and organisations at the end of the day are that dedicated to keeping up to code with all of the Imperial regulations that it really does actually hinder the amount of work they can do. This entire sentiment is continued when we consider the Empire's anti-alien rhetoric. Humans are put in positions of power constantly in the Empire, despite in many cases being lesser equipped to deal with the task at hand than say an alien could be. For this reason, when we look at someone, say, a planetary governor, or a factory foreman, or really just anybody in a position of power, they are nearly always human. And they're given these positions simply because they are human, not due to their actual experience. So something that you'll find in the Empire a lot of the time is people who are underqualified to do a job being given the job simply because of the species that they are. And as we've discussed many times before, there's a lot of disadvantages to having a human running an alien world. The final and possibly most important point to make is that the Empire really does smother its territories. It's a very centralised organisation. This means that all of its power comes from one place, Palpatine. He controls everything from the core world of Coruscant. Having such a centralised government means that everything has to run through him and his organisation. Distribution of power is not given to the planets themselves. It's given to a few individuals who are also represented in the core who are completely loyal to Palpatine. So worlds aren't seen as independent territories. They are basically just used as fodder to generate resources and wealth for the Empire as a whole. For this reason, when it comes to the distribution of wealth in the Empire, it's strictly a very one-way process, with the Empire reaping the bounties of its territories and giving very, very little in return. All the Empire really offers its territories is security. And I use the word security lightly because it's more of a tyrannical police state that it gives them. Essentially, the Empire extracts resources from worlds, food, spice, metals, etc. And it does so at the lowest cost possible, because the territory is technically owned by them. They literally control the entire government and most of the market, so they get what they want and they do it incredibly cheaply. They then use all of these looted materials to build up, say, their war machine. 
and next to none of the wealth that is extracted from these worlds is put back into the world's economy. And this is ultimately a very inefficient process. By just taking from its territories and not giving anything back, not only does it sow an incredible amount of resentment, but it effectively makes these worlds pretty useless. They can't improve their processes. It just exists to feed the Empire, and as we know, nothing can last forever. These worlds, at the end of the day, had no reason to be loyal to the Empire outside of the fact that they were forced to. For this reason, once Sidious was killed and the Empire did begin to crumble, a lot of worlds were pretty quick to just be like, well, we're cutting off your resources, which completely and utterly destroyed the Empire's war effort. But what do you guys think? Do Imperial worlds become decimated beneath the boot of the Empire. And why is this? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, I do hope that you enjoyed. If so, please remember to like, share and sub, as it's really appreciated and it helps the channel grow. Also, don't forget to tick the bell and follow me on Twitter at the Law Guy for regular updates. But most importantly, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all having a great day and staying safe, and I'll see you next time.